Good evening, gentlemen. The term voltage and current gets mixed up by a lot of people. All right. There was an article in Motor Age magazine a while back written by an instructor, and he made the comment, the volt, when the voltage flows, and I wrote a little note and let him know that the voltage does not flow. Voltage is the pressure that pushes the thing that does flow. Current flows. The current is the electrons traveling around the nucleus of the atoms of the copper wire. That's what gets the work done. So another thing that bugs me in my travels is uh, from the conversations I've had with some of my people, it, why they are not checking technical service, service bulletins the very first thing before you even touch the vehicle. I could think, well, the horn is just worn out. I could hotwire it, so I hotwire it and the horn works fine. I plug it back in, no horn sound. Or you could have first installed a new horn, found out you had the same problem, right? Then say, well, what's next? Now you go to wiring diagram. Is the fuse blown? Is that fuse blown? No, it's not blown because one horn works, the other doesn't, there's only one fuse feeds parallel circuit. A bad relay? No, right? Connector 204 open, right there? No, no. no can't be because the horn, horn rim, the horn slip ring's doing the work. Defective slip ring? No, because we got one horn operating, right? How about C100 unplugged? Over here. Can't be that, positively can't be that, because one of those horns is working, it's a parallel feed. How about the ground at 127? Is that good? That's got to be good, right? Because the horn's working, right? How about a, the open ground at 126? Maybe, right? All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay. How about the splice between C100 and 168, this splice right here? Possible. Maybe there's an open in that splice. How about connector 168 open? That's a possibility. So the, the point I'm trying to make is if you use the correct wiring diagram, it'll focus your troubleshooting. That's where these numbers come from. What's allowable, okay? Because they know, they've done their testing, they know how many millivolts you can drop between this point and this point, all right? This is not something that I made up, all right? It's set out by the Society of Automotive Engineers. Now, another thing you can do, if you have an inductive pickup, you can go to a radio shack, get yourself a 10 ohm, 10 watt or 25 watt resistor, and you can, if you use 10, and you, let's say that you had your, just the battery is uh, fully charged, but you're not running the engine. The math is simple. With an inductive pickup, you, you better see 1.26 amp, because at 10 ohms of resistance, at that voltage, that's how much amperage is going to flow in there. You see it? So now you, know, you can tell what you're going to do. If you're charging, you're going to draw more amperage. All righty, is that it? That was it. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate you coming. Well, thank you very much. I hope you learned something.